the only place that, that, that safeguards have been established within um, the UNFCCC are in the context of, of Red Plus. So the establishment of, of, of safeguards attached to Red Plus is, is, quite, um, is quite an advancement in terms, of, in terms of the climate negotiations to begin with. Um, different people break the safeguards out into different categories. Um, I tend to view them um, in three categories, um, so social safeguards, environmental safeguards um, and governance safeguards. There are seven uh, Red Plus safeguards. Um, there's, there's a safeguard concerning um, full and effective participation um, of, uh, of, of stakeholders, including um, Indigenous peoples and local communities. Um, there's a safeguard concerning um, conservation of bio biodiversity. There's a safeguard against conversion from forests to plantations, for example. Um, there, are, um, there, are, there are safeguards concerning uh, sort of improvements of, 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 of sort of monitoring systems. And, um, and so they're, they're broken out into in, in seven, seven categories. Now, the discussion at the moment within the, uh, within the UNFCCC is focused on the monitoring and reporting, or, or perhaps some, again, it's, it's different people view these things differently, but essentially it's about the way in which the safeguards are monitored and reported on. So in order for there to be a system in place for um, the implementation of the safeguards to be um, monitored and reported on, there was um, an agreement um, reached in, uh, in, in, in Cancun um, which established what's known as the Safeguards Information System. Now, there was some guidance um, put in place, which is quite broad, um, concerning, the, uh, concerning the Safeguards Information System. Um, and so there's, some, there's going to be consideration at the conference in Lima as to whether or not um, that guidance uh, is adequate, um, whether or not over the um, past few years, while countries have had an opportunity to work with the guidance as it currently exists, um, whether or not there's a need for additional guidance. Um, and so there's a, there's, there's a discussion that's happening uh, in that context. And so there's a, um, there's a submissions process um, throughout uh, September. Um, and then there'll be a, some discussion um, at the next conference specifically on safeguards um, and whether or not there, there should be uh, additional guidance and, and, and what type of information um, should, be, uh, should be provided um, in the context of, uh, of the safeguards information system. My guess um, is that Red Plus will be a, a, a mechanism um, in, in the new climate agreement. So um, a, good, uh, a good comparison there, or, or a bad comparison, um, may be the clean development mechanism. So that's a, that's a mechanism that exists under the convention um, in the context of um, implementation. So um, my guess is that, 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 that there is a high possibility that there will be um, a red plus mechanism um, and the new climate agreement will um, in effect bring in um, all of the agreements and sort of the framework that exists um, not word for word but there'll be um, there'll, there'll be a I guess a, a way of, of wording it in a in, in, in treaty language um, which will bring the red plus framework perhaps made by making reference to the Warsaw framework for example um, that will uh, that will bring Red Plus into the new into the new climate agreement as a as a means of implementation um, and, uh, and and as a specific mechanism. In terms of financing Red Plus, you know I think that there has been an overemphasis in the discourse on the necessity for for, for markets to be providing finance to to Red Plus. Um, when you look at the numbers and um, you know, what are 30, 40 billion per year expected to be required to, 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 to finance Red Plus, when you look at that in comparison to international finance, you know, international public finance going to, to other things, it's not very much money. Um, and so it's not so much a question as to whether or not it's possible for public finance to um, to, to be allocated towards the forest sector and reducing emissions from the forest sector, call it Red Plus, call it whatever you like. We're talking about, um, we're talking about 
reducing emissions from, from the forest sector. Um, with the additional non-carbon, so livelihood, tenure, I mean, with all of the with all of the other components that come along with with it. Um, so when when you're talking about when you're talking about the, I guess whether or not public money exists for this, I think the answer is that it does. The question is is why is it not prioritised um, and 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 allocated to this by um, by the by the governments who, who or by the countries who have the capacity um, to to be allocating or prioritising um, their public money to be to be going to, to saving forests effectively um, and reducing emissions from from the forest sector. So that's something that I find a bit frustrating in the in in, in the in the discourse concerning Red Plus is this overemphasis on on markets and I think that it's been counterproductive in that it's created a lot of fear. Um, with uh, within communities on the ground, um, that Red Plus is going to result in, and it may well result in um, a markets-focused um, process that that, that 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 has the potential to be detrimental um, to, to 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 communities. Uh